Crowds mill around the train station as the celebrities begin to arrive in Dayton. William Jennings Bryan on the right. The splendid pit helmet and bow tie. That's his pit helmet. Pauses with prosecuting attorney Ben McKenzie, arms folded. And Herbert Hicks in a striped tie. The end of pending John Scopes, bottom left. John Scopes. She shakes hands with Clarence Darrow, the distinguished lawyer who has come to defend him. Defense counsel John Darrow stands between them. Circuit Court Judge John T. Ralston and his family arrive from Winchester. The Ray County Courthouse has been the center of civil and legal activity in Dayton since 1891. Now will be famous throughout the country as the scene of one of the nation's greatest legal dramas. The hour of the trial approaches. The courtroom is jammed with nearly 1,000 people. They listen intently as the arguments are presented. The jury is sworn. The basis of Scopes lawyer. John Arneal and prosecuting attorney Ben McKenzie merit attention. Everyone is feeling. The school board witnesses are called. Yes, they testify. Mrs. Mr. Scopes did teach that men evolved from a single cell organism and is a member like dogs and cats, cows, horses, and monkeys. Brian, melting from the heat and agitation, cools himself with a palm leaf fan. It is as he predicted the trial will be a duel to the death between Bible Christianity and infidelity. A few wary citizens keep their distance. Most of them crowd around the celebrities, or gather in front of the drugstore to await the arrival of the daily papers. Find yourself souvenir book on the street corner of Angela's cell religion. At Darwin's store, it is business, not quite as usual. Do not drop that one. 
There, Brian stooled to the death prediction comes true. The young defendant scopes in what he has taught are almost forgotten. Those dour and relentless appeals Brian on the literal truth of the heart Bible. Yes, Brian insists the whale swallows Jonah. Yes, Eve is made from Adam's rib and the Kudra grass. Does Brian think the earth was made in six days? Not six days of 24 hours, Brian replies. Creation might have continued for millions of years. The crowd is stunned. Brian has undercut his most vital point of fundamentalist argument that everything in life is literally true. The end comes swiftly. The judge cuts off all questioning. Darrow, eager for the conviction that will enable him to appeal the case to a higher court, calls for an immediate verdict. There's no question about it, he says. His client did teach that men descended from the lower order of animals. The jury deliberates for nine minutes. John Scopes is found guilty and fined $100. Brian feels no triumph as the verdict is read. Scopes has been convicted, but Brian senses he has lost the confidence of some who have looked to him as their guide and mentor. Five days later, in a quiet house on a shady green street, he dies during an afternoon nap. Believing that a teaching career is now close to him, Scopes talks with his father about the future. A scholarship fund is set up by people who admire his courage and testing what he believes to be an unjust law. After graduate work at the University of Chicago, he becomes a field geologist, first in Venezuela, later in the United States. He lives until 1970, never quite escaping the notoriety that has followed him since the famous trial that bears his name. A memorial association is set up to establish a fundamentalist college at Dayton in memory of Brian. In 1935, Governor Austin P.A. breaks ground and construction of William Jennings Bryan College begins. Soon after the trial, Darrow appeals the decision to the Supreme Court of Tennessee. The case is reversed on a technicality, but in opinions accompanying their ruling, three of the judges uphold the constitutional finality of the Butler Act and block for their appeals. The case is permanently closed. The controversy about the opposing points of view continues for more than half a century. Darrow, 68 years old at the time of the trial, is weary when it ends, but he continues to speak out and to fight for causes he believes to be important. His interests cover a broad range, and his home is a lively center for intellectual discussion and exchange. He lives until March of 1938, just one month before his 81st birthday.